Okie dokie then. Um, so we're, we're carrying on from uh, where we've left off pretty much before. We, we've been doing all about uh, Canvas, how we access it, uh, the various different things that you can do on it, building pages, assignments, discussions, all that sort of stuff. The sorts of assignments that there are. Um, and last time we did about uh, controlling student progress throughout uh, your Canvas courses. And today we're going into uh, a feature that's called learning outcomes in Canvas. So uh, this is a, a button that you, you may have seen on your Canvas instance before. It's called outcomes. And what it's going to give you, if I just jump into the grade book and I'll change to the learning mastery grade book. It's going to give you a grade book where you can actually see how people are doing against various different things that you set up. So uh, for those of you who are British BTEC teachers, you'll have seen already we've got distinctions, merits, passes on here, and we've got color coded as to whether people have got them or not. Um, so it's an amazing tool uh, for doing BTEC sort of things and for doing skill based assessments. So you're wanting people to hit very specific outcome so as they go through and you want to just say they've done it they've not done it or they're working towards it um so there's lots of different functions in this that uh, they can get and just to show you what the student sees as well if i act as uh that i might not need to act as i should be able to see it here there you go so the student gets it like this and they're able to click through and see what they've got and what they haven't got. So if we've got more, we've got some masses there. It's telling them the numbers that they've gotten out of it. So I'll just zoom in because that's quite small on there. Basically, it's saying zero of five mastered, two of five mastered. Now, um, Canvas has chosen this term mastered. Um, they are bringing some updates out where from the um, the feedback that's in, in those updates, it seems that they're going to allow you to change that terminology away from master, but I'm not holding out hope until I see it live in action. But they can drop down on here and it tells them have they got it or have they not. So P1 is got, D1 is got, but M1 and P2 are missing. So they can see very clearly I have achieved these things, I haven't achieved these things. So it makes life a lot easier for them to see what's going on. Now, unfortunately, it is doing it in alphabetical order for them as well. So you get any distinctions, your merits, then your passes. It would be better the other way around. And if you wanted to, you could uh, change it around. So it, it was you had something different at the start of passes. So it came up first at the top. But you've got to decide what you want to do with that one um, on there. So that is effectively what outcomes are going to give the students at the end and what it's going to give to you as the staff member but how do we set it up well first of all we go into the outcomes option here and then we can create some new outcomes on here now we can see i've got various groups and outcomes here already so i've created a group that's called btec national foundation uh, health and social care level three i can click on there and in here, I've created groups for each of the learning aims for each unit um, on this particular one. There is another way I've done it in, in other courses and the way that uh, tutors have ended up going with has actually been grouping it by passes, grouping it by merits, grouping it by distinctions instead of by uh, the learning aims for that. So if I was to click into unit five learning aim A, it then opens up and we've got our passes, our merits and our distinctions in there. Our passes, it's telling us that to get this P1, they need to explain the importance of promoting equality and diversity for individuals with different needs. I've set it up so it's achieved, working towards or failed. And again, that terminology is something that um, we've actually gone and changed in future ones to say not started instead, um, rather than the, the negative connotation of failed with it. It's they've not started working on it. Um, and I've set this up so it's got a calculation method of the highest score. So whatever the highest score has been, that's the one that they're going to keep. And um, so, for instance, if they've done it once and they've got working towards and they've done it again, they've got working towards and then they've got achieved, then it's going to stick as achieved after that. Now, this can be modified as well. So let's add a new outcome and see what options it gives us. 
So we can give it a name. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to act as though there's another pass in this one. There's not, but I'm going to act as though there is. I'm going to call it Unit Five A P Three like that. So it's it's got its name. I'm putting in the fact that it's a pass and it's part of Unit Five and it's in Learning Game A for us there. Um, and then it, it's friendly name again. We can call it the same thing if we want to as well, or you can give it a, a friendly name for it so students can understand what it means a bit better. And then it's got room for the description. So in the description, you put in what is going to be happening? What, what's the thing that's being measured with this one? Uh, so we're doing about health and social care. Uh, so let's just go for explain the um, development cycle for children, for instance, uh, aged three to seven something like that so in this particular assessment this is what we're wanting them to do to get that outcome we've then got our ratings and, and it's got these basic ones already in there for us um i tend to change these quite readily for stuff so instead of exceeds expectations i'm going to um change that to be achieved i'm actually going to make it three points for that one for us then meets expectations i'm going to change that one and I'm going to change it to working towards. So if I can type correctly. I'm going to make that worth two points on that one. Just going to click OK when I've done it. And then instead of does not meet expectations, I'm going to um, change it to not started. There and then click OK. And now we've got our different options for it. So mastery at. When do you want it to class as mastered? What point score do you want it at? Well, in this case, we want it to be at three. For some things, you might want them to exceed that mastery. So you may have your achieved as three, and you may have another one beyond this, beyond achieved. That's actually, so you can actually put an insert in there. And we could set it to five points. And at five points, they've achieved it with a gold star, or, or they've gone beyond, above and beyond what's expected. Now, obviously, for BTEC work, you don't have that. But for things where they're trying to show you a skill based thing, where they're doing it repeatedly, maybe you would want that. So you choose where your mastery is, is on that one. We've then got our calculation methods. So first of all, we've got a decaying average. So for this, it might be um, every, every time that they do it, it, it averages out to say what score that they've got out of it all. And you have the most recent item give a higher weighting than all of the others. So um, this is really good for if you're wanting a repeated thing and they're just doing it again and again and again and again and again, and you're seeing what score they come out with at the end from it. Um, so it's worth 65 as its most recent one, and all the others are worth 35% of it. So you have to do some maths with it to figure out how you want it to lay out. But that's quite a useful one if you're testing a skill over the course of the whole year. So you're going to have this outcome coming in again and again. You might use it for spelling, for instance. So their spelling you might have as a decaying average. And it could start, but they're starting off and they're getting quite low spelling scores. And by the end, they're getting quite high ones. And you, they can see that progression over time as they master that thing for you. We can have a number of times. So this is really good for our city and guilds courses where they've got to demonstrate that they can do a particular thing. So it could be, um, let's go for hairdressing. In, in hairdressing, they have to have been able to show that they've done a bailage and they have to do it 10 times. So you can actually set that they have to do it 10 times and they have to have hit achieved 10 times for it to count as actually being done. And then you, again, you can see that progress and you can see that they're working towards that they've reached this thing. And if they haven't got that 10 times, then they've not got it. So, you know, you, you're going through those ways with them and you're making sure that they're repeating that process and they're doing that thing again and again and again and again for you. And then you'll have that evidence base that shows how they've gone through it all. We've got most recent score. So this one's quite a useful one. For BTECs, you could use this one. 
on there because they do have the ability to go back and change their work and it might be in changing their work they actually get rid of something that they previously had there so you might want to have it as most recent store on there instead of as, as highest and then obviously we've got highest as well so if they've achieved it at some point they've got it and that sticks then even if they don't achieve it at, at later times so multiple things there that they can use I'm going to go for most recent this time on this one. I'm going to click save. So now we can start using this in our assignments to see if students are getting it. So I'm going to first of all jump to rubrics, which we've got at the bottom here. Now, obviously, this layout may be different for you on there. And I'm going to add a new rubric. And I'm going to call this Unit 5 learning aim a so i want that in there and i don't want this criteria i don't want a bog standard criteria in there i'm going to delete that one and i'm going to click here find an outcome and now i'm going to go into my unit five learning aim a where i've been making those changes there we go we've got these and i want to have all of these in so i'm going to import that one and then go to import in p2 and i think i can actually no, I can't select them all at once, unfortunately. You have to do them one at a time. You bring them all in. There's our P3 one that we've just made. Bring in M1. Bring in M2. And bring in D1. Like that. Into it there. So now we've got these ones here that are there ready to go for us. Now, um, we can see it, it's, it looks slightly different because that's saying not started and these are saying failed. Like I said, other ones I'm using are saying not started rather than failed on there. And I'm going to click create that rubric. So now we have a rubric that is called Unit 5 Learning Aim A to make life a lot easier for us when we're building our assignments. So we're going to go over to our assignments. I'm going to make a new one. And I'm going to call it Unit 5 learning game a in this box here i'm going to insert my um learning game documentation there so i should have should have a document in here that's called that but i may not so let me just double check see so, have we got it in here might not do actually I've got a lot of stuff in here, but have I got the one that I'm looking for? That's a question. There, so that, that one will do. Task 1 A, B. And I'm going to click on my link options. I want to preview it in line. I want to expand it by default so students can see that when they come on this page straight away. And then I'm going to set up my points for it. So I want it at... Um, I, I'm going to go a bit simpler than the 100 points on this because it, it's very simple. They've either got fail, pass, merit, distinction for us. So I'm going to make it four points, and I'm going to make it a point system for us. Uh, I'm going to make it a letter graded system for us even rather than a point system. I'm going to go into view grading scheme. I want to use a different one than the one that we've got here. So I'm going to go into manage grading schemes, and I'm going to create a new one. And I'm just going to call it BTEC marking. And let's get rid of all except for four that we've got on here. So we want it to be distinction as if they've reached 100%. So let's set that to 99 to 100% on there. We want it to be a merit if they've got three points in there so we're wanting 75 percent on that one so 75 for there we want it to be a pass if they've got um in fact i've done this wrong i mean i could have done too many things but we'll go 50 percent on there and we want it to be a fail if it's anything underneath that uh, and i'm actually going to change this around a little bit so it's working on um a third percentage so it's three points rather than um four so this is going to have to be anything above 
and that's going to be anything above um, uh, anything above sixty seven percent. I'll make this anything above thirty three percent. Like that, and click save. Uh, well, it it does say fail um, because in this particular case, it's they haven't achieved it. Um, so in BTEC, they're the terminologies that, that you'd use. You, you have a pass, you have a merit, you have a distinction, or they have a fail on there. Um, it could be refer. I mean, we could actually add in a, a fourth step. Let, let's add in a fourth one that actually works. So we've got outright fail is they've just not done anything on it, on it at all. And then we'll make this one into refer. So let's pop that as um, 25%. That is 50%. That is 75 percent dollars. So the, it, it's that way. So fail, refer, pass, merit, distinction instead on there. And I suppose we could put not achieved instead of fail. That would work. Helps if I could spell achieved. There we go. There we go. We've now got that marking scheme in for us and we can go back to our assignment. Yep, and I have to rename it because I didn't save it before I went out to do the thing. So, unit five, running game A. We can have it at four with the letter grade. Let's go to our view grading scheme, select another scheme, and we'll have our BTEC grading scheme somewhere in there. Have I forgotten? BTEC marking, there we go. That's all I want. Use this grading standard. And then click done. So we can now go through, we've got an online submission for them, uh, all the various things that you want on there. Now, with BTEX, you probably want to set it up as moderated grading because you always need the lead IV to sign off on things before it goes through. So you want to set up a moderator on there. So I always say double the number of graders just in case somebody's off ill. And then the second marker might be off ill as well. So you've covered your bases by putting four on there. You can decide whether you want the graders to see each other's comments, so if you want them to be able, pardon me, if you want them to be able to blind mark. So I tend to untick that so it's blind marking. If you want to have multiple, like a, a first grader and a second grader, that brings in blind marking for you. And then you pick your grader who determines the final grade. So I'm, I'm just going to pick my colleague to be the grader who determines the final grade in this one. Um, and then you've got your assigning to which we been through before on that one. So I'm going to save this now, which is going to bring us through to here. And we've got our um, objective sheet will come up and here, our task sheet for them. Hopefully it'll load sometime soon. And very slowly today, don't know why. Um, but at the bottom here, we've got our plus rubric button. So I'm going to click plus rubric. And I'm going to click find a rubric. And I'm going to search through and we'll have that one that we created before. So it's here inside my rubrics. And where has it gone? Unit 5 learning aim A, there. Let's use this rubric for it. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to click this little edit button because I don't want any points on the rubric. I don't want them to see points. And um, I'm then going to click update rubric. So they're going to see that very simply. And then when we go in as a student, so if I publish this and go in student view, they've got their brief there telling them what they need to do. And down here, they've got each of their criteria and it's telling them very clearly what it is that they need to work on for this on there, explaining it each way through. So if I now start the assignment as a student, and let's just upload any old file. So if I go on to, I'll just upload that picture, just so it's something that's going in there. And click submit the assignment. No, oh, fail. Please try again. Let's try something different instead then. If it's not wanting that to go in, uh, what can we go for? In fact, this is a good time for me to show off something else as well. We've recently um, 
turned on our Microsoft OneDrive integration in Canvas. So I can show you how that one works. Uh, Google works very similar to this if it's Google systems that we use instead. So when they come to upload something up the top here, they've got a selection of things. Um, Office 365 was the old one. We've now got Microsoft OneDrive, which works a lot better than what it did before. So I'm just going to click on there and it should prompt, it might prompt me to sign in or it might uh, recognize who I am. Hopefully. Sometimes test student can be a bit pernickety over what it allows you to use. It is thinking about something. I can see it processing at the bottom. Hopefully it's going to load. It's doing something. There we go. So it's gone straight into my OneDrive and you can see the files I've got. So I'm going to scroll down here now and I'm going to find the one uh, something to put in. I've recently applied for a master's, so let's drop that in. That's my file I want to use. And click submit the assignment. Okay, so that's now gone through. I'm going to leave the student view and I'm going to go in and mark this now. So if I go into speed grader, I can see test student has got this here and I can click on the rubric, view rubric there. And I can go through and say what they've got. So I can say, well, they've got P1, they're They've got P2, but they haven't quite hit P3. They've got M1, but they haven't quite got M2. And they've not even started on the um, the distinction work. I can click Save on that. So ultimately in this one, they haven't yet hit a pass. So I can put a grade in here of one, and that will come through as refer for them on that. Now, obviously, if they've got a pass, I could put in two, and that would give them pass. If They've got a merit, I could put in three, and that would come through as merit, or four, and that would come through as distinction. So I'm, I'm just going to put it through as one for now, because that is what it is. It's a refer on there. Um, I can put a comment in here, but I can also actually put comments uh, inside this as well, if, if I've turned them on. So I've not turned comments on on here at the moment, but I could actually turn on freeform comments within the rubric for them to actually put comments alongside what rating that they've given on there. So give the comments, uh, keep looking at it like so. And that'll, um, at the moment, nothing is going through to the student. The student can't say anything because this is a moderated assignment. So I'm going to go out of there and I'm going to act as my colleague now. And we should see that he has got a call to moderate this particular piece of work. So let me just act as him. There we go. It is to-do list. He has got this moderate unit five learning aim A. So I'm going to click on there. And now he's able to go in and see what I've written and what I've said on there. So he knows that I've given a grade of one. He can see what I've put in the rubric and can see the assignment comments. On here, he can make any comments that he wants to make as well on there. And then go back into the moderation and decide whether he wants to accept all the grades that I've done or whether he wants to put in something different. So if you've got more than one grade on there, they could have multiple graders on here, and then they pick the grader that they want to go with. Or they can just click accept on there, which automatically accepts what's there. They can then hit release, and that releases them out into the grade book. And it, now you can't moderate it any further past this point because it's been released. And then they can click post to students. So that will then get posted out to the students as well. So that allows your lead IV to do all of the IVing before the students even see their grades. And they can just pick one or two at random and see what grades they've got coming out of it. So for BTEX, absolutely a powerful tool. For um, normal assignments, also a powerful tool, particularly if you do have to have multiple eyes on things. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't give you true blind marking unless you've got a um, a third person involved who can be the moderator. Uh, not yet it doesn't, Joe, but it will do. 
in the future. That's what we're moving towards. Next year, we're doing a trial with one of our departments to make sure that they, they, they try this and see if it can all be done through there. But there's no reason why it couldn't all be done um, through Canvas for them. Yeah, it's definitely worth uh, getting it set up and seeing if they, if they will try it for you. It saves so much time for everybody, um, particularly because you get this nice viewing of Gradebook. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the, the question that, uh, that's just been asked is, uh, does this information already exist somewhere from the awarding body? No, it has to be manually set up. There is a CSV method for it, which I shall briefly show. Um, and I'm actually doing some consulting at the moment, helping colleges set those up. So uh, if you're interested in that, you're, you're more than welcome to contact me and I can help you and train you in, in doing it. Um, but we can see here, we've got these um, students on here saying what they've got out of their scores on there. Um, and we can actually see uh, it has now been upgraded, this new system, to not be saying it seeds mastery. It's actually got the points on there for it. So it, it's uh, it's very clear for them on that one as to what they've got. So as I said, when you go into outcomes, there is a CSV for it. And you might have noticed this import button that we've got here. So you can click up load and they give you a CSV to download for it. Now this CSV, is, here's one I made earlier. This is the one that I used for that Shack level three one. And you can see it's quite complicated what, what you have to go through for it. Um, everything has to have its own unique code. You then have to decide is it a group or an outcome. You give it a title. You put in the description. So for these descriptions, I literally just copied and pasted from the exam specs what they were. You then again give them a unique display name for each one on there. You then decide the calculation. So is it highest? Is it um, the um, uh, the decaying average? Is it the most recent? Is it the uh, number of times? Then the calculation, if you're going to be using decaying average or if you're going to be using um, the number of times, you need to put a calculation into this bit for them. You then decide, is it going to be active or is it going to be deleted? So obviously, if you're setting them up, you want them to be active. But if at a later date, something's changed and you want to delete something or change something, you come in and you change those to deleted. Then what's the parent's group for it? So. Uh, in this case, we've got, there's our overall group for it all. This is our unit one group that falls within that overall one. So it goes inside that parent group. These are our level one um, passes in there. So I want them to be part of that unit one uh, learning AMA group on there. You then say, at what rate, when does it reach mastery? What classes as mastery? So in this case, I've gone for th three points, classes of mastery. Three. And then you've got all the ratings. So we've got three achieved, two working towards zero failed. So I'm just going to go into this one and I'm going to change the word failed or not started on that one. I'm just going to replace them all on there. And you can see there's 145 different ones that we've got in here. I'm now going to save this one. I'm going to pop back into my um, learning outcome sandbox and I'm going to click import. I'm going to find that file, which is within my documents. So that's the one I'm after. It's going to upload and process that now and it's going to update all of those ones to add fail, uh, to change failed into not started for us although it might not have done it, may have just got uh, annoyed at me that I've tried to use the same thing twice. Yes, it has, unfortunately. Um, that's why, 
because they've been used that's why they're not going to change for us which is a shame um, but it will send me through an email explaining that i'll see if i can uh, bring that up without showing anything else potentially see if it's come through right now the, the email won't come through until a bit later on today um oh there we go that its own window yeah there you go so it comes with um 100 oh right, i couldn't change it where i was changing it so because i set this up as a um an admin wide one so let's try uploading it in the admin side of things and see if that works for us instead so if i go into outcomes here then i go into our imports and see if i can do it this way hopefully that will work this time but you can see it's very clever in the level of detail it gives us it tells us you cannot change it from that certain bit for it on there so now it's thought about it it's gone through it all let's pop into here let's have a look at one of these there we go it's changed it from um failed to not started and i've got another email come through from them and it says they have been successfully imported well done on there and it's updated them all for us so it's now got that better nomenclature for us and we could change it as well from highest score to most recent or, or whichever way we wanted to change it around on there um so in our breakdown comment guide that i've built for it on here it's telling it, it i've just done this to help me remember how it works so we've got parent groups child groups and then outcomes that go within it and there's our examples for it and how it all works so this is what i did to test it all before actually going ahead with it and in these uh outcomes as well you can have as many different steps as you want obviously i've gone for three here but if you wanted to be more specific on things if you wanted to have overachieved or, or underachieved or, or various different breakdowns on there you could um, you could break it down that way now your rubrics aren't just used for um the uh the learning mastery side of things you can also use rubrics for all sorts of different stuff um throughout canvas so we've got ours set up um we've got this beer and then an fc and lancaster rubric so uh because we work with lancaster um uh university and they're the ones who do some of our degrees for us we have to make sure that uh, staff are giving exactly the correct number for various things to come through. This makes sure that they're using exactly the same number. And then you can actually use this to mark with. So they click on it, it gives them that number and it gives them the letter grade that goes with it. Um, but this ended up being quite confusing to set up initially because um, it's working on percentages or in that letter grade uh, side of things. So if I go just go into the grading side and show you on our letter grades, integrating grading schemes, there's our updated one. So it's working on percentages here, but that's percentages of the number 24 in order to get that when a staff member puts in the number two, it's going to come out as F3 for you. So when we first rolled this out, um, because we also have a percentage scoring for it as well, and 40% is a, is a D on that one. Somebody looked at this the first time and went, hang on, D is at 45%. That can't be right. D should be 40% if we're, if we're marking it. But what they didn't factor in is that this is as a percentage of the number 24. It's the only way to get words in, statements in, and letters in as scoring things within Canvas. So you'll see when we did our BTEC marking before, again, it's working on percentages for it. Um, so this is one where we've set it as a, as a percentage and said, you know, if they write in zero, it's fail. If they write in 70, uh, well, 60, it's for 70s um, pass, 80s merit, 100s distinction. Or you could do it on the one, two, three, four uh, stage that I, I did before where you've got it split up that way because it's always working around percentages for them unfortunately um so yeah you get a, a variety of, of different things that, that go in in there um 
You can even set up outcomes and rubrics on an account level. So if you've got multiple courses that are providing the same um, BTEC, for instance, so you may have a level two BTEC that does half of it and a level three that does all of it, uh, does the rest of it, you might want to set it up on a college wide thing and set up all the rubrics that you want to on a college wide thing. And people can just jump in and take the bits that they need for the assignments that they need them in. Um, so yeah, that is the how you can use Canvas for marking BTEX. It, it was a lot of information, very information heavy that one, and, and um, it is quite. It's either very time consuming or very complicated, depending on which way you want to go around doing it. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's basically it. Have we have we got any questions? Mark your rubrics that are 40 to 49, 50, 50. Ah, right. So for that in a rubric, um, it is very difficult, <laughs> being honest on there. Um, rubrics do have to be used to attach outcomes to assessments, unfortunately, um, David, for that one. Um, when you've got a, a banding of 40 to 49, what you could do is we could set one up and Again, we can have the points in there and be a little bit funny with it. So we could say it's we could say it's 45 as points on there, but it's not really going to work very well on there. What we could do is is um, let's set up a rubric that doesn't have points on it and do it that way. So let's go into a, an assignment and let's go into this one just because it's here for us. Let's do edit and let's add a new criterion. Let's just call it new. And our description of it is going to be, um, let's just leave it blank for now, it needs a description. Uh, let's call it banding test. And there's our description. Now here, because we've removed points from the rubric, we can actually say that this is going to, um, our rating is going to be, let's do 40 to 49 on there and update the rating. And then on here, we can have 50 to 59, update the rating on that one. Um, but again, that's not really going to work well for us because you're still going to have to give a point score for it. Um, but you, you could have your descriptions in here and say the 40 to 49 and a, a, the rating description is to receive this, you must have covered X. Right. And then on this one, to receive this you must have covered X and Y. Like that. So then at the least it's saying that it's there. Um, and yes, Canvas developments are in the US. This system has been set up specifically for um, how the US does their marking, uh, the, the grade point average way that they do it. That is all built around percentages and all built around numbers. Um, so they, they've got things in place that allow us to use terminology, but it's it's not great. Um, so obviously, if you do for this banding test, then uh, you'd have to pick the one that you wanted 40 to 49, and then in the score, put in the grade boundary uh, banding that you wanted, whatever one it was. So it might be 47, and they've done uh, the 40 to 49 banding then on, on that. Um, and yes, uh, you're, you're more than welcome to have a chat with me at, at any point. Uh, you can find me on Twitter uh, at Steve Taylor GFA. Um, and I also do have a booking form that you can actually book in with me uh, to have a chat about um, anything really, um, which is calendly.com slash BFC Stephen. So I'll, uh, I'll put the link for that in the chat for us all. There we go. And that allows uh, people to just book in with me to, to have a, a conversation at any point. Um, obviously, give me a heads up before you do, <laughs> so I know what we're going to be talking about. But yeah. <laughs>